Hi, this is Annette Economides from MoneySmartFamily.com, and today we're going to take a tour of a food bank. Money Smart Family. Hi, Hello. here we are. This is Julia. Hello. And this is Dimitri. Welcome. And we are at Ezra's. Ezra's Holim. Holim. Uh, kosher food pantry. Right, and and Julia's going to talk us through the process of coming to the food bank. So the first thing someone does when they get here. First, when you enter, we ask you to please sign in so okay, that let me... we are accountable for um, uh, who comes to the food bank because we partner with uh, St. Mary's Food Bank and Feeding America. So we just ask you to sign in, your name, your address, how many people are in your family, uh, how many children under the age of 18, just so that we can keep our demographic um, in check. Okay, I'm gonna go kind of quick, but I wanna talk about when a food bank can be helpful. A food bank can be helpful if you're drowning in debt, you need some emergency savings, and you just need a stopgap for a week, or a little a bit short longer. Period of time. Um, right, a short period of time. A food bank can be helpful if you've lost your job, if you're experiencing a medical crisis, if you are on the verge or your utilities have already been turned off. Don't go to the grocery store and buy food. Use your food money to get those utilities turned back on and go to the food bank that week. Let's talk about why people won't go to a food bank. Some people say, well, I'm not that poor. Well, the food bank isn't necessarily just for poor people. Um, the, some people will say, I don't want to go to the food bank. They'll ask too many questions. We don't ask any questions. We don't judge you. We just need certain statistics right. because we're connected with the with the food bank. You need to show ID and you need to show proof of residency. If you're if you're walking through our door, then you have a need. Right. And some people won't go to a food bank if they say, "Well, I still have some money." Well, what is that money for? You know, if if you need that money, like we talked about earlier, for utilities or pet food, to put gas or in the car, to put gas in the car, you can go to a food bank that week. Food banks have food for people that have dietary restrictions. You never know what you're going to find, but I've walked through here, and we're going to walk. We're going to continue this little walk through in a minute. But sometimes you can find gluten-free items. You can find organic items. Um, some people don't go to food bank because they say, well, they're too hard to find. Well, there are national directories for food banks. According to foodpantries.org, there are 15,000 food banks in America. So if you need food, nobody should be hungry. Nobody should ever go hungry. So there are different types of food banks, food pantries. And we're, today we're at a kosher food pantry. There are food banks at associated with religious organizations. A lot of churches have them. There's community ones. Like this food pantry is kosher, however. However, you don't have to be Jewish to, to enter our doors and to shop our shelves. We're open to everybody. We have um, all sorts of affiliations, different religions, different ethnicities, different race. We don't judge mm -hmm. and everyone is welcome. Okay. Like we said earlier, um, there are multiple pull different kinds of items at a food pantry. Sometimes baby stuff. There are even some that have pet food. This one doesn't today. Personal care items, fresh produce, shelf items, meat, which we're gonna talk about in a few minutes, dairy items, and breads. So let's take a walk through. We're gonna show you the shelves, the different things that they have. After we signed in, the next thing we're gonna do is get our shopping cart. And we're gonna start with produce. Let's talk about limits. Sometimes, Julia, there's limits. Sometimes, sometimes there is not. Sometimes we have things pre-bagged. If we feel that it's just easier for you to mm -hmm. have it ready right. to go. Right. So Other items such as butternut squash, which is big and bulky. Yes. You can pick and choose, you know, one or two. Okay. Uh, depending on the size of your family. Okay. So obviously a family of four or five are going to need more right. than a family of one or two. Right. And you're allowed to come to the food pantry once a week to shop. That's amazing. Here they have pears. We're going to grab a couple of pears. And everything that we have, you know, it depends on the season. It depends on what they have right. at St. Mary's. We never really have any of the same thing twice. Times will be from right. St. Mary's, but you also get it from other places. We get. We have a couple of different food banks that we work in conjunction with. 
but basically it's St. Mary's. St. Mary's we can go to twice a week, um, and we have a different one we partner with, which is every other week. Sometimes people donate. Well, some people donate, and also we partner with other food ba uh, food pantries. Maybe they get kosher items in, and we will trade with them. We'll stock up our non-kosher items and give it to them. They will give us theirs, or if they have an excess. So nothing is ever the same. But right. as long as you partner with other organizations, sure. everybody benefits. Okay, so today I've gotten butternut squash, green onions, pears. I'm grabbing radishes, bell peppers, zucchini. Because of the order of where this is all organized, I want to talk about some other things. Like we said, it's different every time you come, but they try to have some baby things. So there's formula, there's cereal, there are personal care items, and you just never know what's going to be here. But they try to have a few of those, which is really awesome. Because we understand the baby formula is very expensive. Yes, it is. Okay, we're going to walk through the shelf items, and I'm going to show you how you can go and select different things. So when you have a family, yeah. a family we allot to have two or three items of something like the tuna fish, as opposed to a family, if you're one or two mm -hmm. people in your family, then you, we shop accordingly. Right. Um, something like this would be one per family. Uh, cereal, we we'll, you know usually is a box per family. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some gluten free brownie mix. We have uh, you know chips. Usually chips are about five chips per family for green okay, for the can... child's lunch. So we were granted a, uh, a several thousands of dollar grant from the OU, which is a kosher organization, which gives us a hexer. Uh, which symbolizes whether something is kosher or not. And they gave us um, a $5,000 grant this year nice. and about a 30-item grocery list to choose from because Passover is the most expensive Jewish holiday we have, and it's very uh, product-specific. Okay, Dimitri has a paper here with all the symbols to know whether a food item is kosher or not. I donated some stuff to the food bank. My friend Melanie, who volunteers here, helped me figure out whether they were kosher or not. But I had some extra jars of mayonnaise that I got on sale, and Melanie helped me figure out that it was indeed kosher so we could do donate it here. Dimitri's back here because he, he is in the kitchen of mm. this food bank. And he's going to talk about how they use the kitchen. Okay, go, Dimitri. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, we make a lot of meals. Um, Who do you make the meals for? Uh, all kinds of people. Uh, people that are homebound. Um, people that are in need. People that are in the hospital where yes. they don't offer kosher meals. That's right. So this food bank has an extra level, which is so awesome. They also do home delivery of meals for people that need kosher food. What type of meal are you making? Uh, usually we put them together, we collectively make a protein, a starch, and a vegetable. So um, a chicken, very healthy. lots of chicken. chicken, salmon, beans, rice, pasta. Can you show us some of the meals you made? Sure, I'd love to. They're right over here. Yeah. Right over in this fridge. Okay. Uh, these are what we have. Okay. Um, so as you can tell, a lot of good stuff. That is amazing. People. Yeah, we put a lot of love into these. So we also carry, we have some dairy, we have refrigerated items. Today we have butter. We also sometimes get yogurts. But like I said, right. we never know what we're going right. to get. Right, and you always try to have eggs and milk if you eggs can do it. Eggs and milk we always try to do. So now we're in our freezer section where, uh, because we're a nonprofit, we are allowed to do things in order to raise money for our organization. And then we sell fish, we sell salmon, and right. we sell chicken. Um, a little bit above cost so that we can make um, some money to right. provide this organization. The reason they're doing that also is because they can't just sell any old meat. The meat has to be kosher because this is a kosher, kosher pantry. kosher meat is more expensive. Right. So, they, so the meat has to be sold instead of given. And uh, totally reasonable for the situation and the pantry here. But that rounds out all of the items that this food pantry has. And like we said, you never know what's gonna be here. It's just a kind thing and, and a wonderful resource for the community. Every food bank has different qualifications. So check with the food bank that you wanna go to for what their qualifications are. Food banks can use your help. They can take donations of food. They can take donations of cash. 
They can also use volunteers. In the show notes, we're gonna put down how you can help Ezra's Holem Food Pantry. Obviously, if you're in the Phoenix area, you can volunteer and also donate food. But if you're outside the Phoenix area, you can donate money gifts. And we're going to have all the details for that in the show notes. Ezra's Holem, the only kosher food pantry in Arizona, is like a treasure hunt with a heart. It's a special place for special people. Hope you like this video. If you've ever volunteered or donated to a food bank or actually visited one, leave a comment below and let us know about your experience. And make sure you watch the next videos.